Generation Z are those born in 2000s and the 2010s. And on the average week, Gen Z will have sex once a week. They will laugh 120 times a week. And they'll unlock their phone over 550 times a week. So what are they doing on their phone? They're ordering Amazon, listening to Spotify, ordering Uber Eats from Taco Bell at 1 o'clock in the morning, or, or using generative AI to complete work. Using something like ChatGPT, you can type in, write me an original TED Talk script about innovation, and pop, here we go, AI generated script. This isn't copy and pasted from Google, this is original. But don't worry, don't worry, this talk is 100% human generated. Now, this may worry you, this may scare you, what is the future coming to? But I'm telling you, in this talk, I'm going to show you why this should light your curiosity on absolute fire. Let me ask you a question. When you were a child, did you ever pretend that your superheroes, your Barbies, or your Lego came to life? When driving in your parents' car, did you ever look out the window and pretend that Superman or a spaceship was flying beside you? Well, that imagination can come to life right now through augmented reality. At using AR and a device, a cell phone, you can point your cell phone around and a digital item appears in the world around you. This is Pokemon Go. This is Snapchat. Or this is the Smithsonian Institution using augmented reality to support education. Point your cell phone toward fossils and they emerge. Those fossils come to life. You can see what that animal looks like, eats like, moves like, all through augmented reality. Ask yourself, what can augmented reality do to education moving forward? Now, you may ask yourself, what is actually running this? How does AR, augmented reality, how does it work? Well, it is, is through that cell phone. And moving forward, how could it be something outside of a cell phone? That cell phone of yours isn't getting much better. Each year, those cell phones may get a little bit better battery, a little bit better camera, but not getting much better. Could that augmented reality show up through wearables, through glasses? Actually, you wearing glasses that have in the lenses have augmented reality. You see directions through the lenses. You see pop-up messages. And right now, you may be thinking, that's lame. I will never put a computer on my face. <laughs> I will never buy that but lean into your childhood curiosity. What are other devices that were lame just like this? Well, let's look at AirPods. When AirPods first came out, they were lame. No one wanted to wear them. Everyone thought they looked silly, right? Today, today AirPods would be a Fortune 200 company if they were a company by themselves. What does this tell us about the future of wearables and augmented reality? Could it change the way we communicate with people around the world? Could it change education as we see it today? Now, you may be asking yourself a curiosity question. How does augmented reality work? Well, it's a very scary term that we've all heard of. <laughs> yeah. The overdramatic is, uh, is AI. It's artificial intelligence. Now, you may be scared of AI. You know, AI is stealing all my personal data online. AI is killing careers due to job automation. AI is... That's a little over dramatic. But do you know what AI really is? AI is your Netflix recommendations. AI is your car's navigation. AI is what unlocks your phone, and for some of you, over 550 times a week. Or AI is virtual assistance. You know, when I was young, when I was young, I used to, I had a question, I had to, you have to go to a friend or a family member to ask a question. But today, my daughter Brooklyn is in the dining room asking Alexa. Alexa, why do giraffes have long necks? So let's lose AI to unlock our childhood curiosity, okay? Let's try it out. Can AI make education more accessible? Yes, I can do that. Okay. Can AI improve logistics? Yes, I can do that. Can AI make entertainment more personalized? Yes, I can do that. Okay, let's try a hard one, okay? Can AI help diagnose diseases? I found this from Tulane University. 
Researchers from Tulane University found an AI and developed an AI machine learning that can accurately detect and diagnose colorectal cancer better than pathologists, you know, the human doctors. <laughs> Putting in 13,000 images of colorectal cancer, which is one of the la largest forms of career deaths in the United States, putting those images, AI could quickly detect and diagnose. Now, are those pathologists out of a job? Absolutely not. But think, what can that do if pathologists save 10% of their week, what could they do to support healthcare? What could be imagined, innovated in the world of healthcare to support people moving forward? I'm telling you, if AI can do all that, AI, I'm sure, could have helped me find a girlfriend my freshman year. Dr. York, I'm artificial intelligence, not a magician. <laughs> okay, that was unnecessarily rude, <laughs> but when I was a ginger, a young ginger, okay, back in the day, I was fascinated by change and technology and what was coming next. And at that time, it was coding. All these future tech billionaires were building businesses out of their garage. I was going to do the exact same thing. So I really got into coding. I talked to my teachers after class. I read everything I could about coding. And I failed. I tried to get passionate about coding, staying after school. And I failed. I failed miserably. But there was a skill I had. It was storytelling. I could storytell my mom why I really wanted a Nintendo 64. <laughs> I could storytell my teachers why I didn't do my homework because of my Nintendo 64. And when I went to college, this was the time Facebook was hitting college campuses. I could storytell on social media. I was a retail store manager in a mall. And I used Facebook to drive traffic to my store, which caused the worst producing store in the district to be number one in just one year because of social media and storytelling. This was my light bulb moment. I thought, wow, maybe this could be my career. I didn't get into coding. I got into digital marketing and communication. What I didn't realize at this time is why I uncover a lifelong passion about innovation and storytelling. This was amazing time. This was an amazing time for me. Now, moving forward, I worked for the 2008 Obama campaign, trying to get traction for the, the, the campaign. And when all my colleagues were fascinated, trying desperately to get on Good Morning America, I was fascinated by blogs and Facebook and social media. And at that time, blogs and social media weren't part of sophisticated marketing, right? But I found that I could get a lot more views on blogs and social media rather than one post on GMA. I went forward, worked on agency clients like Nike and Pepsi. And today, I'm a professor teaching these things in classes, curiosity within organizations with training, and even a grant with two colleagues that looked at the relationship between underrepresented middle school girls and connecting them with technology and communication. And today, today social media is an in-demand job. My question is, if social media was my door that unlocked my curiosity, my light bulb moment, what's their future? It's not social media, it's something else. Here's a question for you. Here's a question. What is the most attended concert of all time? Is it Garth Brooks? Is it Prince? Not even the ballpark. Travis Scott performed for over 12 million attendees inside of Fortnite. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the metaverse? The metaverse is not you sitting in your, your living room with a VR headset all day like some tech gurus may want you to believe. No. The metaverse is Minecraft. It's Roblox. It's Fortnite. The metaverse is a teenager asking for VC for their birthday so they can go to a virtual mall and buy clothes for their digital avatar. And if that sentence didn't make sense to you, lean into your childhood curiosity. When 47% of Gen Z say they spend all time on their phone, there is no question there's going to be some form of metaverse and digital avatars. Digital avatars that look like the way they want to be represented online. It's really only time until there will be a TED talk from a digital avatar. And that day is today. Now, some critics may say, I don't want to live my life in a video game. How big are video games really? 
Well, if you take all the money that movies, all TV shows, NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, and pickleball make in the entire year, video games make more than that combined. And some suburban grandpa that gets up every morning to go to the local park just was excited pickleball wasn't mentioned in that list. So time out for a second. So when I was doing this TED talk, I talked to the TED team and I said, okay, make my digital avatar look like maybe like the baby between Michael B. Jordan and Chris Hemsworth. And unfortunately, that's all I got out of them. So that's, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Change is good. Digital transformation is great. But curiosity, curiosity is revolutionary. Eric Jasinski, the first four-star Asian general in the United States, once said, if you dislike change, you're going to dislike irrelevance even more. Now that's harsh, that's really harsh. Well, let's think about it, right? When I was a young ginger, I used to love Saturday morning cartoons and TGIF. I have a beautiful wife and two great children today, partly because Topanga never returned my emails, but I don't take, hold it against her. But today, today, cable subscriptions are down 25% just since 2015. Change happens, streaming happens, remain curious, or, or let's look at Tesla. When the Tesla S first came out in 2012, people weren't used to these electric cars. So Tesla had to give consumers a car with things they were used to, including a grill. Now, electric cars don't need grills. So they put a fake grill on these Tesla S's. Until people were used to electric cars, then they could take it off. And we're still <laughs> trying to get people used to self-driving cars. Change happens. Electric and autonomous happens. But it's not a one-way street, okay? Look at Apple. And Apple, in 2001, started opening their first retail shops. With a combination of omni-channel omni -channel customer service and no checkout lanes and experiential shopping, Apple's probably one of the most busy stores in your mall today. Retail is not dead. It's just changing. Change happens. Physical connection in a physical world still happens. Remain curious. Now, some of these areas in digital transformation will 100%, some of these will fail. Some of these will win. How many businesses have gone under over the years because they did not remain curious? How many businesses actually didn't lean into social media or e-commerce? Quite a few. Remain curious. Childhood curiosity can tell you how we developed weather mapping and skilled LGBTQ plus support and education around the world. 